boys and girls, welcome back to PJT Forging, and as you can probably tell, we're not in a workshop today. I want to be trying to cover a topic which I've not seen an awful lot of information on out there, which is using these guys, CNC laser engravers, for cutting out templates uh, for electrochemical etching. Now I have seen a few videos where people have tried to sort of show the capabilities of these things, but they're normally very low quality or not very in detail. There may be some out there, but not ones that I could easily find at any rate. So I went away and I bought myself this little guy. This is the Neje. Niji, I like to call it a Neje, the KZ model. It's got a 3000 milliwatt laser. It does also come in a 1000 and a 2000, but I wouldn't go lower than 3000 for this purpose. It cost me 82 pounds sterling, including shipping. And that might sound dear, but when you compare that to using a vinyl cutter, a decent vinyl cutter is going to set you back easily a few hundred quid. And if you're just buying the actual vinyl cutouts from somebody else, even like a sheet of A4 will cost you probably 30 maybe even 40 quid, including shipping. So I figure this thing's actually potentially a pretty cheap investment. That's my logic anyway. Now this particular model comes with its own software, and whilst I'm not doing a full product review of this specific item, uh, I can tell you it's incredibly easy to use. It's, it's almost idiot-proof. That's coming from a technophobe like me. Now I've had a play with a few little test pieces. It likes eating cardboard. It works really well on acrylics, although this one needs a bit of a clean-up. And it doesn't do a half-bad job of burning wood either. But none of that is the reason we're going to be using this thing. The idea behind this process is if you want to etch your logo or a design or your touch mark onto a blade, what you normally have to do is get hold of some kind of vinyl cutter or vinyl cuttings, stick it down to your blade, and then etch through the stencil that you've created so that the blade itself is not getting burned anywhere other than through the design you want. Now the idea with the laser, you have to start off by using some form of medium to create your stencil. I'm going to be using relatively cheap everyday household items or items that anyone could easily get hold of at any rate. And then I'm going to be using the laser to burn the design through whatever medium I've put on the blade. Once the design has been burned onto the blade, I'm going to be taking it down to my workshop and I'm going to be using my electrochemical etching machine in order to burn the design onto the blade. That's the idea anyway. Whether or not it works very well, we've yet to see. Just a quick bit of safety advice guys, if you are toying with the idea of getting one of these, make sure you buy a pair of laser goggles as well. So anyway, let's skip forward a bit in this video and get to the steel I'm going to be using and the various mediums I'm going to be trying out with the laser. So here is our test piece. From left to right, we've started off with some red automotive paint. We then got permanent marker. In the middle here, I'm going to try using packing tape. Then we've got a black nail polish. We've then got a second nail polish, which is a quick dry within 60 seconds, I think. And then on the end, we're going to try with electrical tape and see which one of these works. First things first, I'm just going to chop this up into pieces. Why are the pieces different size? I don't know. I overestimated how much steel I had. All right then, here we are with my samples ready to test. Paint, pen, packing tape, electrical tape, 60 second polish, non 60 second polish. Let's go upstairs to the laser printer and find out what works. Well, see if you can guess which is first up for the test. All right, let's just make sure we've got it lined up in the right place. That looks about right. And I think we're going to start off with a laser power of 85%. And let's go for a burning time of 35 milliseconds. Okay, I can already tell that that's not enough. So we're going to turn the laser strength up to 100%. And we'll give it a burning time of 40 milliseconds and see if that works. Take two. Right, let's see how we did. Well, in fairness, that doesn't look too terrible. You can see the top of the P and the circle of the I are a slightly lighter shade, and that's obviously where it had the first coat on the half power, if you like. So I'm not actually sure if that is metal I can see underneath, or whether or not that's just the colour the paint goes when it's burnt. I guess the way to find out will be at the end when we etch it. Anyway, let's move on. Next up we have the pen, which I must admit I'm not particularly hopeful for, but we'll give it a try. There we go, that's how that came out. Whilst it did appear to actually eat the pen away, I don't think it's actually going to allow for etching. I think the whole surface is just going to come up. But, nonetheless, this is why we are experimenting. Third, we have the packing tape. And this one I'm really quite hopeful for, because if this works, this will be incredibly cheap and easy to replicate over and over again, very low cost. So, let's see how we go. Thank you. 
Well, to a layman, that looks like it came out quite well, but it's very difficult to see whether it's actually penetrated all the way through the tape. So I guess we're only going to really be able to tell on the actual edge, but I'm hopeful. Next we have the electrical tape. I would be equally pleased if this one works, however I'm not confident that the laser is going to be strong enough to get through it as it's actually made of quite thick plastic, but uh, only one way to find out. Well, that one definitely wins the prize for being the stinkiest, and it's hard to tell, but like I feared, I don't think that's burned through the tape. But again, we'll etch and we'll see. And finally, I'm going to do both the nail polish samples at the same time. We'll start off with the under 60 second drying time one, and then we'll do the over 60 second drying time one. And there we go, there's the last two test pieces done. It only just now struck me that I should be printing these two off in the same size font as all of the others so as to avoid a bias when it comes to the etching process. I want it to have an equal chance. So I'm going to reprint these two just probably in the bottom corner of each one or somewhere on there where there's room. And then we'll move on to the etching. There we go. That error has been remedied. Oi. Right. What we've got here, glass of salt water and the electrochemical etching machine I made God knows when, well over a year ago now. I'll be honest, I haven't used this thing in a while, and as you can tell, it's quite dusty, so I'm hoping it doesn't explode when I try and use it, but uh, we'll find out one way or the other. Okie dokie, I think we are set up and ready to go. We've got our etching machine, applicator, positive clamp, each of our test pieces, and our electrolyte solution. We're plugged in and I think we're ready to start testing. So I'll do it in the same order that I printed them. So we'll start off with the paint. Right then, first thing we need to do, apply the salt water to the applicator. We've already got our positive clamp connected. So it's time to switch the machine onto etch and see if this does anything. Mm, that sounds hopeful. I'm just gonna etch both of these, both the uh, the big one and the small one. And I'm gonna be doing a balancing act with it. So I'm gonna etch each piece for 10 seconds and then mark for a further 10. Okay, that's 10 seconds of etching. Flick it over to mark. Okay, so the marking needs a little bit longer. I'll get back to you when I'm done. Okay, so I ended etching that for 30 seconds in total and then marking it for another 30 seconds. So we'll mimic that for all the other pieces. But that actually seemed to work quite well. So we've got a decent first runner. Next, we've got the pen sample. And I must admit, this is probably the one I'm most curious about whether it's going to work or not. So let's crack on with it. Well, I've got to say, I think this may be a surprise contender as well. That actually seemed to work with nothing but permanent marker. But again, we'll leave it until the acetone comes out to make sure. Next, we have the packing tape. And I'll be honest, this is the one I'm most hopeful for working. Let's give it a try. Hmm. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure on how that one went. I think it will go either way. It'll either be brilliant or it'll be naff. We'll see at the end once we remove the tape. And on the subject of tape, it's time to move on to the electric tape, which I think is going to be a massive failure, but you never know. Let's see if this does anything at all. Oh, actually, not sure. Bear with me on this one. This might be a little surprise. Holy cow, I think it's actually etching. This actually could potentially be a new contender for top spot, because this is probably about as similar as you can get to a vinyl stencil. Bear with me, we'll see. Okay, I stand corrected. This one and the pen are going to be the two I'm most curious about the outcome of. And finally, we're on to the two nail polishes, so bear with me and I'll smash these out and we can have a look at all of them together. Well guys, I won't lie to you, there are a few surprises in there. Having had a bit of a closer look at the pen one, however, I think that has done as expected and just disappeared completely. The nail polish ones actually seem to work much better than I was expecting them to, and the electrical tape I didn't expect to work at all, but who knows. Anyway, let's get on to getting the tape off and acetoning the rest, and we'll see what we come up with. Well guys, uh, the results are in, and I gotta tell you, they're kind of surprising, or at least they are to me. I'll show you them in the same order that I've been working on them throughout. So we'll start off with painting again, and you'll just basically see the results along with me. Okay, so here we go. Here is how the paint turned out. A little bit blotchy, came out okay, especially if you look at the small part. The downside of this is that I had to leave the paint 24 hours to dry fully, so it's a time-consuming project for that kind of result. Moving on. Next we had the pen, 
which as you can see you can kind of make out that it worked a little bit but this is a this is a no-go as expected the actual pen itself didn't really hold up so I think we can rule that one out next up we had the packaging tape the packaging tape worked okay it's probably a little bit difficult to see in this light but it's very fine and I think the trick with this would be you'd have to etch it for longer in order to make sure it really got through because obviously the way the laser interacts with the tape it creates a very very fine template but that would be a good option for very fine designs. The electrical tape came out very blotchy similar to the packaging tape but probably not quite as good so given the choice I think I'd rather stick with the packaging tape so we'll put that in no pile. And then the surprise result really came from the nail polish. The nail polish, as you can see, came out really well on both of them. Probably a little bit clear on the nail polish that takes longer than 60 seconds to dry, but they're both pretty close. So I think really if we have to pick a winner, it's the longer than 60 second nail polish. That came out really good. Opposite to the packaging tape, however, um, this came out quite bold, as you can see. So somewhere between the two of this and the packaging tape is probably a good mix. But I think if you have the option, I would go with the nail polish that lasts longer than 60 seconds. And to be honest with you, it didn't take that long to dry. It was dry within about five minutes anyway. So it's not really a big con. It's just something to bear in mind. Right then, putting what we've learned into action, I'm using the longer than 60 second nail polish on this cheap stainless steel knife, which I broke a while ago, so this is just a scrap test piece really. We're going to stick it into the laser machine and we're going to see how well this works. Hopefully this leaves us with a half decent design. This knife is a little bit tricky with the size of the frame, so it might be not quite central with where I want it. So laser power is 100%, burning time is 40 milliseconds as per with the test pieces. Let's give this thing a try. Right then, let's take this down to the workshop for etching. There we go, there's the etching and the marking done. Now we'll hit it with the acetone and see what we come up with. Right, that's what it looks like after the acetone, but now we need to just buff it up with some fine grit sandpaper and hopefully we'll be left with a half decent design. Well, if this was a proper knife, there would be a lot more cleanup required, but just for a rough test, that came out nice. Really happy with that. This is definitely going to be implemented in the future. Well, there you go, guys. Kind of an interesting little project. Hopefully this has been helpful to some of you, especially knife makers out there when it comes to etching your blades. Up until now, I've not really seen many videos on this kind of topic, so uh, I thought I'd do a bit more in-depth one than the ones that were actually currently out there, or at least the ones I could find. If you found this useful, or if you just enjoyed it generally, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You'd be doing me a huge favour as ever, and all that other YouTube blah 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 that everybody goes on about at the end of their videos. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.